the budget issue, we also uh, request that the government uh, provide uh, budget and facilities so that we can educate and produce uh, more researchers. Uh, at the moment, we have about seven researchers per 10,000 population, and we want to raise it to about 15. Okay, the average is about 25. Again, we are under investing. And the third part, uh, we think that in the future, research uh, must be done more in the private sector, not in the public sector. Um, not only because of the funding, uh, but also because of the uh, linkages uh, of research to commercialization, uh, because of the human resource, uh, especially the career path of researchers in private sector, which is very rare at the moment for Thailand. Most people, uh, able people, when they come back, they go to public universities and less on the private sector. So we always hear complaints about uh, you know, uh, research outputs are shelved and not being used. So we think that for the next 10 years, we have to shift research, uh, researcher career path uh, to the private sector uh, at the ratio of 70 to 30, if that is possible. It's very difficult, but uh, we must do it. So this is the background. Uh, uh, the rest, uh, since this, this is an uh, adaptive governance approach, uh, I don't have much to offer except uh, to say that uh, we in our office also uh, have run a number of uh, the so-called uh, future scenario planning on many issues, and climate change is also one of them. Uh, we did this for the past uh, six months. We have completed it. Uh, it's the issue of future of low carbon society at the APEC level. Uh, and we are doing it uh, under the the uh, scheme of the APEC uh, working group on uh, industrial and industry industry science and technology. Uh, and uh, many of the participants come from the APEC region, and we have concluded uh, on a number uh, of things. But I think uh, the 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 key point for this exercise is that we do not look at climate change as, as a, only as a present situation, but more toward future situation, and then try to backcast what we see as a plausible scenario 10 years from now, for example, or 20 years from now. And, and that's quite useful because then people would uh, would uh, think out of the out of the box more. Uh, people would have tendency not to uh, uh, stick around too much with the current problems that they cannot uh, overcome, and uh, people would have more opportuni opportunities to think about uh, other sectors uh, that they do not belong more. So this this is quite uh, interesting. Uh, the way we do it, uh, we not only uh, look at the, the future of climate change itself, uh, we also look at other functional uh, system that uh, could be impacted by climate change. Uh, four of them, four major issues that we look. Uh, the first one is housing, construction, urban life, and transportation. Uh, something that uh, is fascinating if we think about how uh, the changes in weather and atmosphere would affect us, our life, as urban people. Secondly, we also look at migration, rural life, and uh, natural resources. The third, we look at the society uh, from the perspective of healthcare system. And the last one, we look at uh, trade of goods and services. So this is sort of a, a functional thing so that participants uh, can express their views from from where they come from uh, and at the same time uh, it's a learning session so that they can learn from other sectors as well and the backcasting is quite useful because once we see uh, future scenarios then we start asking question uh, how do we go from from here and from now to there and then Sometimes the future scenario looks gloomy. Then we ask ourselves, how do we minimize the damage that might occur in the future? 
the way we see it today from from the facts and figures that we can compile today so it's not it's not sort of a prediction it's it's more a, a possible scenario construction and if it's a, a rosy picture of 20 years uh, from now then we start asking ourselves how do we do it today to pave the way for 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 that thing to happen now, uh, the results uh, come into uh, two levels. Uh, one is uh, national level and the other is international level. Let me just uh, quite briefly uh, uh, take you uh, through the number of uh, sort of policy recommendations, uh, more of a macro view than a micro view. The first one is the conclusion that at the government level, uh, there needs to be a, a sort of a get together. It's a, it's a thing that I mentioned in the beginning. You know, you get to get uh, more ministries involved in climate change rather than just a single uh, ministry to to be responsible because it's a multi multiple issues and it needs a lot of cooperation. Secondly, you once talking about climate change, the 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 vocab vocabulary that uh, should go along with it is green, whatever it is, green planning, green zoning. Uh, in in Thailand at the moment, we, we have a problem at our eastern seaboard because of the uh, pollution uh, and the waste. Uh, and it's a, quite a big area and it starts uh, to get people to to be involved more and more. Uh, so th this is a good lesson, you know, in planning things, uh, we need to look ahead. Even though uh, 20 or 30 years ago, the idea of uh, providing uh, a large zone of industrial estate in Eastern Seaboard uh, was at that time a, a, a very exciting and uh, a very adventurous and very beneficial for the country. Now situation has changed drastically. Uh, it's even in our constitution that we have to comply with not only EIA, but now HIA, the health part as well. We also should look at how we can conduct more research in, in, in uh, issues such as energy, uh, which, uh, as we all know, carbon dioxide uh, generate a lot of problems that we are facing today. Uh, and in doing so, energy efficiency uh, tends to be the first thing that uh, we should uh, address because it's something that we can do without much preparation, you know, reduce our consumption or be more conservative, uh, be no more energy cons conservation in our lifestyle. Uh, we need to do more in our re renewable energy research. Uh, Thailand has, is, has in the past until now import uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, to our country and we spend more than 10% of our GDP in import. We are net importing country for, for fuel. So we need to put some of those money into the renewable energy uh, research. We also have to look at the structure of carbon pricing in the future because we want it to be incentive rather than disincentive. Public education, I think at the moment we, we are starting to talk uh, not, not at the high education level but uh, at the primary school, secondary school level of how we can uh, let them uh, learn more about uh, the role of climate change that will affect their life and the society. We also have to look at how we can uh, do the emission inventory uh, and the enforcement and monitoring that uh, have to come with uh, whatever policies that we are going to put in place. At the local level, uh, <coughs> local governments in Thailand, we, we have uh, a number of, uh, large number of autonomous uh, districts uh, and now they are quite uh, pretty much empowered because they now get 25% of the national budget to their local needs. Uh, so at the local level, it's quite important. Uh, in Thailand, we have about 7,000 districts. And if we can do something about those uh, as a whole, then the central government would, would be more relaxed and can do better job. Uh, because we don't need a, a large government and trying to do everything for the whole country. 
We also